This has got to be the smallest computer I've ever seen in my life. Hey everyone, this is Ken from Wheelchair at Tutorials and welcome to a new video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the success story from Kickstarter and Indiegogo known as the XDO Pantera Pico PC. And inside this tiny little box that I'm holding in my hand here, there is an Intel CPU, eight gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. I honestly can't believe that they managed to squeeze that much technology inside a small little box like this. First, let's start with the travel case that XDO sent me for the Pantera Pico PC. So this is the travel case. They do have a bigger one. It's called the All-Star Bundle and it's much bigger. It comes included with a uh, battery powered projector, a foldable keyboard, a mouse, the Pico PC itself, so many more options, but they just sent me the Pico PC, so they gave me the smaller travel case. But the travel case is rather well built, it's pretty sturdy, it will be able to take a tumble here or there, and it does have a handle on the top if you're wanting to carry it around for easy uh, travel. It also has a carbon fiber finish on the outside. Obviously it's fake, it's not real, but let's have a look at the inside of the travel case. So we actually got a pretty decent amount of foam here. The thickness of the foam is really, really thick actually for a travel case. So this is definitely gonna be able to take a few drops uh, and nothing will be harmed on the inside. So let's start with the power supply on the left-hand side here. So the power supply on this guy here is USB-C, which is fantastic to see compared to a lot of other mini PCs that I've seen in the market and personally have reviewed. A lot of them come with a barrel connector and I personally prefer USB-C over the barrel connector. And the rating for the power supply, if you're curious on this guy is 100 to 240 volts. So it's universal power supply and it is 1.5 amps, 12 volts, 2000 milliamp on the uh, adapter there. So if you're wondering or you need to replace it at any point, there you go. And we also have the main star of the video, which is the Pico PC itself. And as you can see, it is really, really tiny. <laughs> it fits in the palm of my hand. But we'll be taking a look at the in-depth specs of this guy in just a second. But we have a little bit more on the travel case. So the travel case here, we have a zippered pouch at the top and you can feel free to store you know, your dongles, uh, maybe an adapter, a micro SD card reader if you need one. Me personally, I like to use it for my wireless mouse and keyboard. I put the dongles in here, zip it up, safe keeping, you won't lose your dongle that way. So that's pretty much it for the travel case for the Pico PC. To disassemble the Pico PC, we have to remove the bottom rubber gasket or the rubber foot. I just peeled it off and this exposes four screw holes here, here, and here. And we're going to just take our precision driver here and we're going to get all four screws out. And look at that. So this is actually really, really easy to upgrade your storage. We have an M.2 SATA drive instead of an MVME SSD. And the size of this drive is 2242, if you're wondering, not 2240. And the model number on this is HMS4. 10. And it definitely does look like it's keyed for an NVMe drive, so I wonder if that does indeed work. The keying for a SATA M.2 is much different, so as you can see there's two notches out of here. On NVMe there's only one notch, so that's how you tell the difference between a SATA and NVMe SSD. This must be the LED on the uh, top of the PC. There is an LED bar, and it looks like this little dainty, little thin gauge wire that we've got here must be uh, holding that onto place. There's four screws, four tiny little screws. I don't know if you can see them in the, each of the corners there. So you are definitely gonna need a precision driver in order to get those guys out. So that came out a little bit more violently than I wanted to. Uh, it was hanging up on the, the power button here. So hopefully I didn't do any damage to that or the uh, ribbon cables. It looks like we're okay. I like how they put some kind of reinforcement tape on the inside for the ribbon cables to keep them upright. We can actually see the cooling solution now. It looks like it's an aluminum heat sink with a small little fan on it. And underneath that would be our RAM and I believe our Celeron. So if you wanted to replace the thermal paste, you're gonna have to dive in deep. They put some interesting schmooze on there. I guess it's so the uh, connectors doesn't come off, which is probably a good idea to be honest with you. Normally I don't like to see that, but with something this tightly packed in there, it's, it's probably a good idea uh, to do that. But that's pretty much it. It's rather straightforward. It is a bit time consuming, so do keep that in mind. But I would say it's, it's pretty, user serviceable, it's nice. Next, let's talk about the build quality of the Pantera Pico PC. So the build quality is actually really, really good on the 
Pico PC, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. The entire chassis that houses everything on the Pico PC is actually made up of one solid piece of aluminum that's been milled out and it's been anodized. And the anodized coating makes it feel like a MacBook Pro is the best way I can describe it. And obviously the anodized coating is colored and they offer seven different colors of the Pico PC. If you're interested in that, I have the blue variant obviously, but the seven colors include black, gray, red, blue, purple, pink, and rose gold. Those are all the color options that you get for the Pico PC. Now, if you're wondering about the weight of the Pico PC, it's actually fairly lightweight without a micro SD card inside of the Pico PC. And it's just the Pico PC itself. According to my scale, it weighs about 193 grams on my scale, which is just shy of half a pound at 0.43 pounds. You now, if you're wondering about the dimensions of the Pico PC, the dimensions of the Pico PC are as follows. So it's 2.63 inches by 2.63 inches by 1.75 inches. Let's get a closer look at the Pantera Pico PC. On the front of the Pico PC, we have a power button. We also have a trans flash slot, which is also compatible with micro SD card slots. Beside that, we have two USB 3.0 ports. And above that, we have a small little cutout for a reset switch, which you'll need a paper clip in order to use. So switching over to the backside of the Pico PC, first we have our USB-C DC input. This is for our power. Unfortunately, there is no PD support for this Pico PC. So that means you will not be able to use your Samsung phone charger or just another USB-C block that is PD support. You have to use the power supply that is included with the Pico PC in order to power it up. So that is a little bit unfortunate. But continuing on, we have another USB 3 port underneath that. We also have a microphone and headphone combo jack in the middle of the USB ports. Beside that, we have a USB 2.0 port. And above that, we have our HDMI out. As for the in-depth specifications of the XDO Pantera Pico PC, on the inside of the Pico PC, we have an Intel J4125 Celeron, which no one has probably ever heard about because it is a rather low tier chip, but we'll get into that in just a second. That CPU runs at a base of two gigahertz with a boost clock of 2.7 gigahertz. Unfortunately, there is no hyper threading on the J4125 Celeron. So we have four cores and four threads. And the CPU also comes equipped with an iGPU, which is the Intel UHD 600 graphics, which unfortunately is a little bit on the low tier side. So we're gonna have a little bit of issues running some games. So we're gonna have to definitely pick and choose what games we're gonna be playing on the Pico PC. We also have eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory at 2133 megahertz. We also have a one terabyte M.2 SATA SSD and my Pico PC came already pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. As for connectivity and Wi-Fi, the Pico PC comes equipped with an Intel wireless AC3165. That is a Wi-Fi 5 Wi-Fi chip and it maxes out at 433 megabytes per second. And it also supports 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz bands. And it also has Bluetooth 4.0 bundled in with that Intel Wi-Fi chip. I also want to take a look at some benchmarks for the Pico PC because I'm really curious to see how well the Pico PC is going to do with that Celeron in there with no hyper threading, that J4125 Celeron CPU with four cores and four threads. Starting with Cinebench R15, the Pico PC scored a score of 272 points for the CPU. As for the OpenGL score, it scored 20.39 frames per second. Moving on to R20, R20 scored a score of 624 points. And for R23, for the single core score, we got 434 points. And as for the multi-core score, it scored 1,252 points. After Cinebench, I also run Geekbench. I ran both Geekbench 5 and Geekbench 6. Starting with the Geekbench 5 scores, we got a single core score of 457 and a multi-core score of 1,558. As for Geekbench 6, the single core score was 379 and the multi-core score was 1,151. So moving on to Crystal Disk Benchmark because I'm really curious to see how good the M.2 SATA is inside of the Pico PC. And to my surprise, the SSD is actually really, really good. It scored the theoretical max that SATA can possibly transfer speeds at at 550 megabits per second for its read and 500 megabits for its write. So the M.2 drive gets a thumbs up from me. That's actually pretty good, but let's see how long it lasts for, who knows.
because it is a brand that I haven't really heard of before and I have no idea where they source their chips from. As for the SD card or the trans flash port on the front of the Pico PC, this is where things get a little bit disappointing unfortunately because the SD card reader is a bit slow. Now I have a micro SD card in here that is 90 megabits per second transfer speed read and write so it should theoretically reach that max and it doesn't. The SD card maxes out at about 30 megabits per second for the read and write for the SD card slot which is rather unfortunate. As for the 4K playback on YouTube, when I first loaded the video in I noticed a little bit of dropped frames but once the video got buffered in that's when everything actually started working really really well and the video played back just perfectly fine. If you full screened it and you were just watching the video it played back fine but if you're moving around other windows and stuff like that and trying to watch the video at the same time as you're opening other windows then the the system is going to bog down a little bit. You could definitely use this as a kind of media entertainment console I guess if you wanted to plop it on your TV stand and stream some videos with this you definitely could do that with the Pico PC running at 4k 60 FPS. So that was a really pleasant surprise to see because I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be able to do it or not. Although the Pantera Pico PC is not really made for gaming we're going to try some gaming anyway. So the first game that we tried was Bioshock 1. This is the original version and not the remastered version. The game was running at 720p on the lowest settings. We were also running this game in DirectX 9 because DirectX 10 would crash. And as you can see, it actually ran pretty well. We got very close to 60 FPS. The story was pretty much the same for Bioshock 2 original version and not the remastered version. We ran this at 720p as well as DirectX 9. This was also running on the lowest settings possible for Bioshock 2. And again, we also got close to 60 FPS. Next, I tried the original version of Skyrim. This is also sometimes dubbed as Old Rim. We were running the game at 720p. Unfortunately, we weren't able to reach the goal of reaching the 60 FPS mark that we normally want to get. I had to use a ultra low graphics mod in order to reach 30 FPS at 720p. And with that mod, it actually is very, very playable, very reminiscent of the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of Skyrim. Another game that I thought would be difficult to run would be Doom 3, the OG version, not the BFG version. We ran the game at 1152 by 864 and we were running the game at medium settings. To get Doom 3 to run better or at least in a playable state, I had to do a lot of modding for Doom 3. I had to adjust a bunch of cache level values on the INI file of Doom 3 in order to increase the cache levels. And we also had to decrypt the PAC4 files, which allow the game to skip the decryption process while it's also trying to play the game. And as you can see, with those modifications in place, as well as with those settings, we were able to reach almost a lock 60 on Doom 3. You could probably get a better performance out of it, but the game looked much worse at a lower resolution as well as the uh, low settings on the game. So we went with medium instead. Moving away from the harder to run titles on the XDO Pantera Pico PC. And we're going to move on to a more modern RPG, Sea of Stars. Now Sea of Stars actually ran really, really well. There's not too many graphical options that you can choose from for Sea of Stars. So you're running the game at 720p and as you can see it got pretty close to 60 FPS. Again, I would probably try and lock the game to 45 FPS just to get a smoother experience with the frame time. But overall I'm actually really pleasantly surprised that this Pico PC was able to play Sea of Stars quite well. Moving on to one of the games that's probably most requested for low power PCs and that's going to be the Windows 10 edition of Minecraft. Do keep a note that the Pico PC is not powerful enough to play the Java version of Minecraft so you'll end up being stuck with the Windows 10 edition from the Microsoft Store. For some reason Minecraft always runs the game resolution at whatever your display resolution is so I've changed my display resolution to 1920 by 1080 so we're running the game at 1080p. As for the graphics settings, we were running at 10 chunks and most of the graphics were set to fast instead of fancy. And as you can see, we're getting a really smooth, enjoyable experience out of Minecraft, surprisingly enough. We're pretty much getting a lock 60 most of the time in Minecraft. So Minecraft is extremely playable on the Pico PC, which I was not expecting whatsoever. Moving on to some emulation, shall we? The Pantera Pico PC is capable of emulation up to the generation of the Dreamcast and the GameCube. GameCube is sort of hit and miss. Some GameCube games want to stutter and not run really well, so it's really dependent on the games for GameCube. But as for the Dreamcast, it runs Dreamcast really, really well. Perfectly smooth, lock 60. The game that I decided to benchmark for ReDream, which is the emulator for Dreamcast, is Evolution 2. And the game was upscaled to 1280 by 960p. 
As you can see, we're getting a lock 60 right across the board with the game. As far as it comes for emulation, I would stick to anything lower than the Dreamcast. Next up are a few games that are more indie-like titles and pixel games, so these actually run quite well. The first one I tested was They Bleed Pixels, and They Bleed Pixels was running at 1080p at a lock 60, and as you can see, perfectly smooth, enjoyable experience, and I expected this one to run quite well on the PC, to be honest, because it's not very graphically intense, and it is a pixel game. And the last game that I decided to test was Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Trap. This is the remake of the Atari Classic. Unfortunately, I couldn't get their game to run at any resolution higher than 720p. 1080p was all over the place in terms of frame rate, so if you want to lock 60, I recommend going with 720p. And as you can see, it ran really, really well. I was actually really surprised that this game was going to run as well as it did. During all those synthetic benchmarks and gaming benchmarks, I was actually measuring the power draw and the efficiency of the Pantera Pico PC at the same time. And during idle, using the high performance profile on Windows, we saw a power draw of 7.7 .7 watts on average. As for a full synthetic load, well, using Cinebench R23 and the high performance profile on Windows, I saw an average power draw of 17 watts. And lastly, while we were gaming, I measured about 24.8 watts from the wall while using the high performance profile on Windows. And the game that I took this measurement from was Bioshock 1 while running at 720p. So as you can see from the power draw, this little Pico PC is actually really power efficient. So if you're looking for a power efficient solution, this might be the one that you're looking for. The last thing that I want to test for the XDO Pantera Pico PC is the fan noise. And well... Yeah, as you can tell, it's not the quietest machine around and there's no way to adjust the fan speed. So it sounds like this 24 seven. So if you are sensitive to fan noise, this might not be the product for you. Overall, as for my thoughts on the XDO Pantera Pico PC, I'm actually quite surprised on how well it performs. I kind of like it, actually. However, there are a few cons that are involved with the Pico PC. For example, the slow SD card reader. I would really love to see a faster SD card reader on the Pico PC. They got USB-C, which is perfect. I would rather much have USB-C than a barrel jack, but they got it with a DC power supply, which means it's not PD compatible, which means you won't be able to use just any USB-C block or charger to power the Pico PC. You have to use the one that's included with the Pico PC. It would have been nice to have an ethernet port so people can maybe do this as a small server in their home, like a file sharing server, or maybe an entertainment server for streaming video to, or maybe even using it as a Steam link. The last thing that was rather unfortunate about the Pico PC was the lack of NVMe N.2 support for SSDs. It would have been really cool to see them include the ability for me to use an M.2 NVMe SSD if I wanted higher speeds in the Pico PC if I needed it for say video editing or something like that. As for the pros on the Pico PC, it is a very tiny and compact but capable machine. Well, another thing that I really liked about it was the inclusion of the built-in micro SD card slot. Although I did say it was a little bit on the slower side, it's still nice to be able to have expandable storage on the Pico PC considering we only have one M.2 slot on the Pico PC's motherboard. Another thing is, is that this thing can gain. If you temper your expectations and if you kind of tweak your settings and lower the, the graphics quality to mostly low slash medium, you can actually get some playable experiences when gaming out of the Pico PC. The last thing to note is the pricing for the Pico PC and the elephant in the room. Now this is an Indiegogo slash Kickstarter campaign for the XDO Pantera Pico PC. And the configuration that they sent me is actually valued at 258 US dollars. And that is the top of the line. So that is the eight gigabyte model with the one terabyte SSD. The other one is the medium tier, which is valued at 218 USD for the 512 gigabyte SSD. All of them have the same CPU. They have the same amount of RAM. It's just the storage that really is different when it comes to the different tiers of Pico PCs that you can choose to buy. Considering how serviceable this thing is for the SSD, you can just buy the cheaper model one with 256 gigabytes at $209 compared to the one terabyte, you could probably buy a better drive than the Herc drive, or you can upgrade it later if you run out of space if you wanted to. Now with all that in mind, remember this is an Indiegogo slash Kickstarter campaign and you aren't guaranteed the Pico PC if you buy it. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. They have been shipping people these over the past year or two. So I'm actually very confident in, in recommending that you 
buy it if you want from their Indiegogo campaign because they've been pretty good about updating the community with their shipments and everything like that. But with that said, that is going to be everything for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the XDO Pantera Pico PC. I will leave the links for everything in the description below. And with that said, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys take care. See you later.